News Channel 5 this morning. Hey, good morning. Happy Friday. It's February 2nd. That mm -hmm. means it's Groundhog Day and Punxsutawney Phil, we're sorry to say, has seen his shadow. I know. And that mess we told you about yesterday morning on I-40, it's finally cleared up, but it took 13 hours to reopen the eastbound lanes in Dixon County. It's the worst week for the Dow, in fact, since the financial crisis nearly a decade ago. In fact, just take a look at some of the closing numbers from yesterday. The index tumbled more than a thousand points. Forget listening to the experts when it comes to who will win Super Bowl 52. Too. All you need to do is listen to Fiona the Hippo. So we're, we're listening to the Groundhog for weather and uh, the Hippo for sports. Yeah, very good. I you just need someone for news. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. A replace. No, I don't even want to no, want to no, go no. there. Yeah, analysts are saying this was one of the most watched special elections in U.S. history. He walked a few feet away out to this bulletproof glass door and he tries to get in. There was a struggle and it was caught on camera. I want to show you this video real quick. This Hurricane Irma is making its way up the coast. We're also starting to notice some damage. Tornado warning coming southeast Davidson County and Williamson County until 730. Take cover in those areas. I can tell you, I just heard the sirens going off. They normally would open up at six o'clock and Shoney's would be packed with people ready to eat their breakfast. This morning it's packed with police as they investigate what exactly happened here. We expect that 15 year old shooter to be charged within the next 48 hours with two counts of murder and multiple counts of attempted murder. Actually, I'm walking up here right now and I can see that this fire has started to rekindle. Now smoke is coming through my house now, real bad. It's coming through your house? Yes, sir. Do you mind if we take a look? Yes, sir. At first I didn't have this much smoke, but now I do. You have the fan out here as well to kind of air things out. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you, Charles. Let's, let's check back outside one more time and, and see what's going on. In fact, over here right now, come over here. This is Mr. Forrest here crossing we... the street uh, right now, and we're going to try and get a word in with Mr. Forrest. Mr. Forrest, do you have any comment? Mr. Forrest, what do you say to the citizens of Nashville? A quick exit from the former sergeant of Metro Nashville Police, Rob Forrest, who uh, resigned effective January and took retirement. Uh, no questions were answered from Mr. Forrest. That was our first opportunity to ask him anything, and we wanted to give him the opportunity uh, to address the allegations and certainly to address what happened in court this morning with him pleading guilty to a Class C felony. A community in mourning after a firefighter loses his life on the job. Tonight, the city of Lawrenceburg grieves for Jason Dickey and prays for the others hurt in the blaze. News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy begins our team coverage with more on firefighter Dickey's final call. This is a hard time and a trying time for our department. Firefighters spend a lifetime training for tragedy. I want to ask for everybody's prayers. But even the most well-trained can never fully prepare for a day as tragic as this. Engineer D Jason Dickey, 38 years old, succumbed to his injuries last night. Firefighter Jason Dickey responded to his final 911 call at 4.30 Monday afternoon. He boarded a fire truck and drove two miles away to a burning home on Hood Lakes Road. I guess everything just went about as bad as you could bad as you could imagine. Eric Lanning lives next door and helped evacuate the home's elderly couple to safety. The flames spread and three hours later, firefighters heard the word they forever fear. We hear Mayday over the radios and uh, the roof uh, had collapsed, I believe, uh, on top of one of their firemen. A roof collapse trapped Jason Dickey and four other firemen for 12 minutes. The other firefighters rushed inside to rescue them. Four of them survived, but Dickey, an 11 year veteran of the Lawrenceburg Fire Department, did not. That was one of their men that got lost last night, and they'll all feel that. And I, I hate it for them, and I hate it for the family for sure. Dickey's family is just weeks away from growing. The 38 year old leaves behind three children and a pregnant wife due to have their baby soon. And now his family and these firefighters are left dealing with the tragedy even the most experienced are never fully prepared for. They're just like one mom. You know, these kids, uh, th these kids that I call kids because I'm the oldest guy here, you know, uh, are my boys. You know, the boys that I never had, and I've lost one of my boys. This rural home sits about half a mile off the main road, and fire crews even pumped water from the nearby lake at one point last night as a source. This evening, fire crews have since cleared the scene, and the investigation into what sparked that blaze is ongoing. Reporting from Lawrenceburg, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5.
Winds are picking up along Lake Okeechobee and time is running out for residents to evacuate before Hurricane Irma makes landfall in just a matter of hours. In Pahokee, Florida, things have largely stayed the same for decades. Sugarcane, always the moneymaker. The lake, a big attraction. Even this apartment building. We're here, my next door neighbor. Standing strong for decades. It's been here before I was born. I'm 51. Janice Thompson has lived through hurricanes before, and she's not leaving for Irma. And everybody running, but it's the whole state of Florida, so where is you going to run to? Running is what state and local officials have hoped residents would do. If my mom not leaving, I'm not leaving her. So whatever happens, happens. I'll be with her. But Janice and her 21 year old <laughs> daughter, Charlisa, say they're safe on the second floor. Whatever come through here is going to come and we this building still going to be standing. Safe options still exist. Just 20 minutes west, a last minute shelter has opened up in Cluiston. Because you never know what we're going to get into with the storm. Anyone, even pets, are welcome to ride out the storm inside these brick walls. But in Pahokee, some things and some people are proving it will take more than just waves and wind to make them move. This is, is a small town, and they saying the hurricane is bigger than Florida. So where can you run? Nowhere. The shelter just opened up this afternoon. There are no cots, no extra services, but they have food and water, and most importantly, a roof and sturdy walls. Reporting in Clewiston, Florida, I'm Dan Kennedy. Now back to you. It doesn't have to be a beautiful day to find this foursome on the golf course. Dave, Ray, Walter, and Jim tee off every morning, 7.30, Sharp. Wow. And one of them has been playing longer than the rest. Not bad for an old guy. Jim Straka. There's people behind us. Is 90. Grandpa. <laughs> Jim walks his bag 18 holes every morning. I hope I stay alive for the 18. Rain or shine. There's a good shot. He's only missed 11 days this year. You know, I get up in the morning, I can hardly wait to get her. Jim's style is old school. He wears knickers. Get up there. Get, get, get. See if I could putt, I'd have a game. And his putter is wooden. Garage sale, $2. The only problem? It didn't come with directions. Man, that was a birdie. Three hours with his friends goes by fast. Pull off a ring. And after a morning on the links, he loads up his car and drives straight to the nursing home. I'll open the door. Where everyone knows Jim. Did you win today? Did you beat the young no, guys? No, no. <gasps> but I had fun. But this isn't his home. There you go, sweetie. It's Betty's, his wife. Hey, you're having a good morning. Betty and Jim first met on the dance floor. Nobody did a better cha-cha than us. They fit a lot in almost 20 years of marriage. As much as most people would put in 75. But now, remember, some of it, things, little of it, have changed. No. Betty no. has Alzheimer's. Well, that's okay. After suffering 30 mini strokes over the last few years, this once amazing dancer is now confined to a wheelchair. You only can only have one attitude, accept what you can't change and be happy with what you got left. What else you gonna do? Jim visits Betty every morning. Think we should sing a little? Oh, sure. He's found her mind is triggered by something simple. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. It's a love forever inked. This is the letter, honey, that you wrote me a long time ago to my sweet husband on his 75th birthday. A love letter that Jim carries everywhere. All my love, Betty. P.S. Many, many happy returns with me. It's that touch that keeps Jim coming back because even if he skips that rare day on the golf course, you love me? There's one appointment he'll never miss. I love you too. With photojournalist Jordan Powell, I'm Dan Kennedy for News Channel 5. The band played on. Ooh, ooh. <laughs>